I'm hearing um, oh, I'm hearing a journey and a battle and a victory in the bracelet. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. And I like the bracelet. Like mm-hmm. like well, well, <laughs> there you go. The, the, the feeling I got you said journey, journey battle, battle, and victory. Journey, battle, victory. Yep, and I will speak mm-hmm. to that. So the Lord mm-hmm. and then you can allow it. I like it. Yeah. Woo. And sand, something about sand uh-huh. in the bridge. So sand on his word, you cannot lie. When I was uh, doing this and the prophetic for the women, what I felt is that this is going to be our final place. Yeah. I've been coming around all day today thinking, what is it? I mean, I, I wanted to hear it. I wanted to hear it. I think it was the song in the air. I couldn't figure out what it was. Oh, it is time. Well, happy Wednesday to everybody. Glad everybody is here tonight. Um, Anybody have any prayer requests or any testimonies, anything they'd like to share? Yes. go that far but (laughs) 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 yeah Mm. 
<laughs> so where am I? What, what, what's going on here? Is this kind of like someone that's trying to um, go back to Job and what's wrong with me if I don't think about this? I just stopped and see if I'm going to be in my life. And uh, this is something, of course, small, but um, I think it was Sunday, Sunday night. My husband was frantically running all over the house. He had lost a little slip of paper with the Wi-Fi codes, which is a really big deal in our house. <laughs> and I said, just stop. All things hidden must come to light. And said, what are you talking about? I said, it's the word of God. Just stop. Just say, all things hidden must come to light. It's like, whatever. I said, say it out loud. <laughs> all things hidden must come to light. I said, all right, now you can go find it. And he runs upstairs. He goes, found it. I like literally didn't even, <laughs> and I'm like, I said, and that was how long? He goes, whatever. I said, that is the word of God. Amen. Maybe you think it's coincidence, but I know better. Yeah. I know better. And hopefully you know better. Yeah. And I'm like, and can we please write down the Wi-Fi code somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jane. All things hidden must come to light. things hidden must come to light. And I thought, well, Lord, if you will do it for something as trivial, trivial as the Wi-Fi codes, what else are we not asking to be revealed? I mean, instantly, I'm talking instantly, like, he didn't even get to run into the next room, and he's like, oh, found him, laying right there in plain sight. Like, Lord, what else are we not asking for you to reveal? The prosperity. Everything, right. My prosperity cannot be hidden. healing manifest instant i'm talking instantly like and my dad was laughing i said dad you heard that he goes he goes i don't know what it was i said you do know what it was don't tell me you guys don't know i got excited i about had a holy ghost fit in the kitchen and they're like whatever coincidence i'm like you guys need to get on board and realize this is how it works in the kingdom yeah. amen amen Uh, well, let's stand and let's uh, pray for the service tonight. For those that couldn't be here tonight, Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that when we speak your word, Lord, we get to watch your word come to fruition.
Lord, Lord, in all things things small and all things great, Lord. Let the words of our mouth, Lord, let our initial response, let our instinct be to speak your word, Lord, to speak your word and expect in that moment that it comes to pass, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the prosperity of your servants, Lord. We thank you for the health of your servants, of your servants, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight, Lord. We thank you for the word that comes forth, Lord, from this place, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to reveal the treasures of your word, Lord, the treasures of your word, Lord Jesus, the treasures of your presence, Lord. That you encourage and lift up those here tonight, Lord, from the birth of this world away as we turn and we look upon you, Lord. Lord, we come to worship you, not afar off, Lord, but face to face, Lord. We come because we love you, Lord. We come because we hunger and we thirst for more of your word, Lord, more of your presence, Lord. More revelation. More of you, Lord. We want more of you, Lord. We hunger and we thirst for you, Lord, for your kingdom, Lord. Our heavenly home, come to earth, Lord. here tonight, Lord, those that are far, Lord, that you continue to draw in the members of this body, Lord, that are yet to be found, Lord, that yet to be knit into this body, Lord. Have your way. Have your perfect way in this house, in this body, in this night. In Jesus' name. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Yes, Lord. And I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Yes, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Yes, Lord. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes, Lord. Roberto, would you come take the offering tonight, please? Speak a blessing of prosperity.
Roberto's finishing up. Has anyone not in here not seen the Father of Lights yet? Jamie, have you seen this already? Yes. Okay. John, have you seen this already? Okay. This is good. It's infiltrating. Yeah. Sunday, we'll, we'll have another situation here. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your holy name. I don't know about you, but I'm way past ready to worship the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Be 
on, bro. See your face.
Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. You all did great as always. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Appreciate the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank uh, Suzanne for standing in Sunday. did a great job. Amen. Appreciate that so much. And uh, everybody, thank you for just hanging in there and doing what you do so well. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Get right to the Word of God tonight. Amen. I want to begin with Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. And I want to talk to you about the cure for sin consciousness. Hallelujah. And again, I'm uh, leading up to something, have been. Uh, last Wednesday, we're talking about the exact wisdom or exact knowledge of God and how all these things play into us being able to operate in the power of God. And uh, I'll get to that more probably on Sunday, but uh, there's things that the church just is not walking in, even though it's ours. And uh, it's partly because of this idea of sin consciousness, also just a lack of, of knowledge or wisdom, I guess, is a better word. Uh, and uh, God has given us that. In fact, we have it, like so many other things, but we don't rely on it. We go too much on our experiences and on our own uh, natural knowledge, sense knowledge. And that is a ripoff. It's, it's a thief, and it, it steals us, uh, steals from us, amen, these precious promises that God has already purchased and provided for us and part of the way that that's done is through sin consciousness and so it never hurts to repeat and go back over uh, these gospel truths which are all a part of grace and uh, I heard someone saying you know it's just like uh, you ate today and even though you may have gotten full you'll eat tomorrow Unless something really weird happens, you'll just keep eating. Why? Because you keep getting hungry. Because your body needs food to amen, like burn calories and give you energy and all of that stuff. And the Word of God is exactly the same, only it's for the spirit man. So you just don't hear it once and think, well, I, I ate that. That's good enough. I'm, I'm done with that. Praise the Lord. Amen. I eat steak, and I'll just eat another one. Praise the Lord. I'll have, thank you, sir. I'll have another. Praise the Lord. Because uh, I just like it. Amen. And that's true of a lot of things. I like salmon. I, I mean, I could eat salmon three, four days a week, grilled, smoked, you know. And uh, I just don't get tired of it. I may not want to eat it every single day, but I don't just eat it once and say, okay, I've had salmon. I know what that is. I'm going to move on to something else now. Now, next week, I'll be wanting salmon again. Praise the Lord. And it's the same way with the Word of God. Yeah, I heard it. I know that. But there's a hunger in us, uh, in the spirit, that draws us back to these, these truths because they give us energy. They give us supernatural, spiritual strength and power. Amen. So, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Now, Jesus unveiled or revealed to the world, to everybody, but to us as believers it is especially significant because in his revealing, he was uh, unveiling his ability to meet our need 
and to satisfy our claims or the claim of justice, which is the law. That's against everybody. The claim that the law has against us. Amen. And Jesus satisfied that on the basis of love. Not on the basis of works, not on the basis of, you know, uh, effort or de uh, deserving or anything else, but simply on the basis of love. God is love. So he satisfies the demands or the claims of justice or the law for all of humanity. Amen. And he did it through love. He was imparting to us in that process, and this is what I think we fail to see a lot of times, he was imparting to us through this his nature. Amen? He was giving us his own nature. Praise God. So redemption was a demonstration of the ability of God to take care of his own creation. God can take care of it. And that was his... It was a demonstration of God to prove this, that I can take care of the creation. Even though it's fallen, because of the free will that I've given them, I can still take care of them. I can still provide for them. I can do anything and everything that needs to be done. Everybody say praise the Lord, because this still goes on in each one of our individual lives. We are a new creation. I'm a new creation. You're a new creation. And believe me, God can take care of his creation. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 4. Hallelujah, Jesus. 2 Peter 1 and 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, let's look at James chapter 1 and verse 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Those are uh, almost synonymous scriptures in the sense that they're telling us what has happened as a result of our redemption, of this uh, ability that Jesus, uh, God in the flesh, has used to satisfy the claims of justice and to make us, amen, uh, his, his, his nature or impart to us his nature, amen? So we aren't only born of God, we're the will of God. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Not just born again, not just born of God, but we are literally the will of God. Praise God. The will of God. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. You know, a lot of us were born not necessarily by the will of our parents, just by an act of our parents. <laughs> so yeah, say praise the Lord. Doesn't mean they don't love you, doesn't mean they didn't want you, just means you weren't willed into this world. You, you, they didn't sit around for years and think, geez, I can't wait to have little Nathan. Praise the Lord. He just showed up one day and they said, whoops, hallelujah. But we are the will of God. No accidents in the kingdom. Amen. We were born of God. Amen. And it was his will, praise the Lord, that we be born. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. See, it was, it, it was as of his own will that he brought you forth. Amen. He had you in mind for a long, before the foundation of the world. He had you in mind that he was going to bring you forth. This is very personal. That's why we call it a personal relationship. We have a tendency to think in general terms about God, but God is a very personal God. He's, he's t totally intensely personal with you, but he, because he's God, he can be the same way with me Amen. and any other believer, any other born-again person. We've got to get this in our minds and in our hearts that, that we are one with God, that we are special to God, that we are the will of God. 
And it was by his will, amen, that he brought us forth. Praise the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. And this, back to what I was talking about, how we are not necessarily willed here by our parents, but we certainly were by God. Because being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Praise the Lord. Not corruptible seed, not the way natural men are born or begotten, amen. But we are begotten through the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. The new birth or being born again is based on legal grounds. Amen. It's, it's about a legal demand that the law places. And so we get born again, and this born again experience is based on the need that the law, the demands of the law. Amen. The title deed is the empty tomb and the seed in Christ. Amen? Think about it. We have, been re we have been recreated. We have been born of God and have become partakers of His divine nature. Now, I don't care what's, you know, the issue going on on the outside of you. What you need to constantly remind yourself of is that you have, you are born again, you are a new creation, you are the will of God, you are begotten of God, you are a partaker, a recipient of His divine nature. Now that's how God sees you, that's how God created you. I mean, I got goosebumps right now just thinking about this. This is how God relates to me. He doesn't relate to me the way my wife does, the way... People on the street do the way other people that might. Even though they may be close to me, they still see flaws. They still have issues and all that kind of stuff. God doesn't see me that way. I have his divine nature. He sees me as he sees Jesus. He sees you the same way. Oh, if the church ever, ever gets this revelation, I mean really gets it down deep inside, there is nothing that we won't be able to do, that we won't accomplish personally and collectively and corporately. This is what the world is waiting for. This is what heaven is waiting for. And this is what the church is waiting for. Even the, the body is groaning. Even man is groaning. For what? For this reality. For what we already have, but are not walking in it. Because we're so easily deceived by the natural. We're so easily dissuaded or persuaded that this is it, that this is what we are, this is who we are, that our, our, our continuous ups and downs and failures and weaknesses and all that kind of stuff define us. And they do not define us to the only one that's important, exactly. which is God himself. Amen? 1 John chapter 5 and verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now look at verse 13, the very next verse. These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. We are partakers of his divine nature. We are actually born of God. It's not a, it's not, this is not a philosophy. This is a reality. This is the truth. Amen. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ. The name of the Son of God is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. We've begotten by the Word. These things have I written unto you that you might believe in the, in the Son of God. You need to believe in the Word of God. You need to believe what the Word of God has done. If you don't believe this, how can you believe that the Word of God has begotten you? And if you believe that the Word of God has begotten you, then you're crazy not to believe this. 
Because it's defining what he begot. Yes. Amen? That ye have eternal life. That ye may believe the word of God. Yes. Without being born again. Without a revelation. You might think it's a good book. You might think there's some good things to do here. But this is who you are. This is a, this is a diagram of your life. It is a, a historic record of all that you have and all that belongs to you. Look at verse, let's go on and read verses 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. Who? The Word of God. That if we ask anything according to His will... His testaments, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, if it's anything that's in here, He hears us. And if I know that it's in here and He hears me, whatsoever I ask, I know that I have the petitions that I desired of Him. Anything that's in here that I ask is His will. Just as I am His will. I have whatever I ask for simply because I ask according to the will. In other words, I'm, I'm not begging. I'm just saying what he said. God, you told me by your stripes I'd be healed. Okay? You said whatever I set my hand to prospers. Okay? I, I'm not trying to get God to do this. He's already done it. Who did he do it for? Those that he begot. Those that he willed. Those that he's given his divine nature. It's mine. Praise God. Whatever the petitions that we desire of him, they're ours. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We were born again. Now, we can be in the flesh, but we still don't walk after the flesh because we're not flesh. We're spirit. So it isn't a question of I'm only not under condemnation when I'm very spiritual. I'm not under any condemnation at all because I'm not flesh as far as God's concerned. I have flesh, but he deals with me by the Spirit, which is the new nature, the nature of God. There's no condemnation for me because I'm in Christ Jesus. Now, you can't get out of Christ Jesus. No, the scripture says that no man can take you out of his hand. Well, we hear this stuff all the time that, well, yeah, but you can jump out. Really? Could you jump in when you were a sinner? You were one or the other. You're either in or you're out. If you're out, you're out, and you're not getting in unless you get born again. If you're born again, you're not getting out. He will never leave you or forsake you. Amen? So we're not walking after the flesh. We're in Christ. And in Christ, we have everything that belongs to us according to the Word of God, according to His will. This is His will. This is what He wills. It's not just... It's, just, it's not just a, a will as a, like, a, like a death. It's the will of God. It's what God wills for us. Yes. He wants this for us. He, he declares this is ours. Amen? Yes. You need to say it. You need to say that to yourself over and over and over. Because I'm born of God, there's no condemnation. Amen? God is my actual Father. Yeah, not, this is not a metaphorical thing. God is actually my father, and I am actually his son. Literally, actually, I've been begotten of God. This isn't just some religious mumbo-jumbo that we spew around because it sounds good. It's the truth. It's what the word of God says. I am actually his child. You are. 
You need to say it over and over. You need to remind yourself, He's my Father. God is my Father. There's nothing... They, the Jews freaked out because they didn't have that relationship that Jesus would declare that. But He's the firstborn of many brethren. We should be saying the same thing. You are my Father. Abba, Father. I'm your child. Actually, literally. Praise God. Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, verses 31 through 37. That's why there should never be self-consciousness. We should never be uh, intimidated. We should never be insecure. The reason we are is because we're not operating from the reality. We become insecure. We become anxious. We become all these things. And, we, and I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying we do that because we do not identify with who and what we really are. Think about it. If you were the king of the world, son, which is what, what you are. But if you were just the king of England, if there was a king of England, <laughs> look, you would not be intimidated. Everybody else would be. What you want is what you get. You declare and it comes. As long as it's in agreement with your dad, the king, nobody is going to cross you. That's not a good idea. You understand what I'm saying? If we know, if we really understand, nothing's going to intimidate us. Nobody dare cross us. Because my dad can whip their dad. And their uncles and their aunts and their brothers and their sisters and everybody else that they want to bring along for the party. Praise the Lord. So what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's look. go back to verse 30 uh, for a moment, Sheila, if you will. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. God looks at us as his perfect work. <laughs> yeah. You, John, are a perfect work of God. Amen. Now, I've been called perfect, a perfect lot of things. Most of which I wouldn't want to repeat right now because of video. But, but according to God, I'm his perfect work, regardless of any other thing that people may think. And that's exactly how he feels about you, Roberto. You are his perfect work. Man, that's big. That's huge. Perfect. Perfect. Amen. Amen. Look at, uh, look at verse 32 now. We're going to keep bouncing around right in this for a little while. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now notice the two words here. With him. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. See, along, along with the gift of eternal life comes all things. Jesus did it all. And all that he did belongs to us. Everything he accomplished, everything he did 
is ours. Just let that sink in for a minute. Everything. All things. That's why God says, verse 33, Who shall, because of what I just said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. That's the same word for makes righteous. There's only one person in the universe who could condemn you. And that's Jesus. And he happens to be your advocate. The accuser, the devil, and the charges that he brings against you, they don't amount to anything. Nothing. They're the charges of a liar and a murderer who has no standing in heaven, who has no access to God. Amen? Verse 34, who is he that condemneth? It's not Christ, it's the devil. It's Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. God's, he's, that would be paranoid, schizophrenic to the extreme, that the one who is prosecuting you is also trying to defend you. I'd say he had a, co a conflict of interest. No, he's constantly declaring you righteous, perfect, the will of God. Amen? Thir verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril of the sword? See, our advocate... Our own risen Jesus, the Lord, amen, the one who died for us, the one in whom we were recreated, the one in whom I have been made the righteousness of God. Who's going to separate me from his love? And then Paul goes on to list all of the things that Satan could do to me and he climaxes it with verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to know when God takes on a job, he finishes it. In fact, he finishes it at the beginning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He undertook to set man right with himself. That was the task, if you will, that was before him. He didn't trust the work that we could do, that man could do. He didn't trust in angels. He didn't trust in any other being. God himself did it. Sonship he gave us righteousness, heir of God, joint heir with Christ. God has absolutely no consciousness of sin in you. None. He doesn't. He said, I don't know any, any, any sin in you. He has absolutely no consciousness of sin when it comes to the born-again believer, his child, the righteousness of God the will of God, the begotten of God. And that's why he gives us Romans 8, because neither should you have sin consciousness. You have the nature of God, his divine nature. You should not have sin consciousness. Amen? It's not a question of God just you know, sweeping your bad behavior under the rug. He's already dealt with it. It's been done. It's been 
finished. It doesn't exist. Amen? It's hard to grasp, but you've got to, that's why we have to have the exact wisdom or knowledge of God. That's why we have to operate in the mind of Christ. That's why we have to be reminded of these things on a regular basis. And we need to remind ourselves that every single day, because our own, you know, the Bible even says, even though your, my heart condemns me, or even though your own heart may condemn you, God doesn't. So the devil condemns, but he has no standing with God. And his accusations mean absolutely, absolutely nothing. But even when my own heart condemns me, my own conscience, God doesn't. And that, that consciousness of sin keeps us beggarly and, and uh, insecure and unsure. And that's why it's so important that we understand who we are and what God has done for us. And we can start walking as kings instead of leading the horses like servants that it speaks of in the, in the Old Testament. I believe it's in Proverbs. I see men. It was a prophetic vision. I see men, kings and princes, as servants, leading servants. I mean, we're taking a back seat to people and to spirits as though they were in charge when it's we who should be on the horse. It's us who are the... the the kings and priests. And you need to remind yourself of it over and over and over and over. It's not pride. It's confidence in God. We confuse pride as pride is something when when it's when you elevate yourself. This is something God's done. We don't take any credit for it. It's just the reality of who we are, and we just walk in it because that glorifies God. It, it reveals his grace, and it spits in the eye of the devil every time we do it. If we had the boldness of Jesus, and the reason Jesus had boldness was because he only did what his father told him to do. He only said what his father said to do. He had the mind of God. There was never any lack. Wherever there was lack, it was multiplied. Multiplied in terms of no lack. Wherever there was sickness, there was healing. Wherever there was death, there was resurrection. Wherever there was fear, there was courage. That is our inheritance. Amen? They're not all a bunch of different gospels. It's just the one gospel of grace. And if we ever ever completely understand this and get the revelation the church will rise up in a power that it has not known ever not even in the book of acts it'll be something greater than that this earth has ever seen before or will ever see again in terms of the church and that will usher in the greatest revelation and the greatest revival genuine revival that this world will ever know praise God and God's entrusted it to us. But to do it, we've got to know who we are. Amen. Amen? It's like the prince and the pauper. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to realize we are the prince. We do have the family jewels, praise the Lord. We, we've got the goods. We just have to present it with some boldness and some courage to ourselves, to the enemy, and to anybody for whosoever will. Amen? I am God's son. Amen. Amen. That you, could, you can quote that. The Lord said that to me one day here praying. I've, I've said this before, but it's the truth. I haven't heard the Lord's voice a whole lot. You know, you hear the, the inner kind of unctioning. But I know I, I, it was as clear as if it were audible. I'm not saying it was. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I'm here repenting. And God's saying, don't embarrass me, son. <laughs> don't, make a, don't, make a fool, don't make a fool out of me when I don't know what you're talking about. 
You know, that's, that's what we need to realize. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are the will of God. We are the perfection of God's work. The highest, the, the apex of his creation. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe God can finish what he starts. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise God. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. We need to just start living it, believing it, declaring it, and watch how things change. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus just went about doing good. Hallelujah. He just went about doing God stuff. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless all of you. Thanks again. Have a great night. See you back here Sunday. Come expecting something of the Lord. Amen. He's going to do something great in worship and praise and everything that we do, every testimony. Amen. God's going to show up and show himself mighty. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord.